If you've ever toured, visited, or even driven past USC Aiken's campus, you might have caught a glimpse of a pretty unique building. Now from the outside, it might just look like any other building on campus, besides having a giant observatory dome, of course. But what makes the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center so unique is actually on the inside. Curious? Let's take a journey to probably the most out of this world part of USC Aiken's campus, the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center. Like any other department, the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center has standards and a motto to live by. Dr. Gary Sen, the director of the center, communicates that focus. We are actually uh, in our 25th year of existence. So it started back in 1987, and the purpose of it was to work with the K-12 schools, work with students and teachers to try and improve uh, science and mathematics in our area. So uh, we have as a, a motto, infusing a love for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So all the programs that we do fit under that, that mindset of trying to especially get young people excited about those areas. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM, is the driving force for Dr. Sen and the faculty of the Ruth Patrick Center. But how do they infuse this love for STEM? So we do that through programs for students where they come on field trips here. We do that through programs for teachers because our interest is also to help teachers become better at teaching in STEM and then by doing so having a better impact on the students who are going to be our future STEM leaders. Science is the engine behind the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center, but who exactly is Ruth Patrick and why was it named after her? The reason that we call it the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center is that as we were looking for external funding to support these kinds of activities, we were encouraged to identify a, a renowned person who could be, uh, it could be named after. Ruth Patrick is uh, a person who is a limnologist, which is a person who studies freshwater biology, essentially. And she was actually hired by uh, the DuPont Company to come down before they began the Savannah River plant. And she did a baseline ecology study of that area with the goal of trying to understand whether or not having a, a nuclear facility would have any impact on the environment around it. Her pioneering efforts in science are what we try to model for the programs that we do here. We want to be pioneering in our programs to infuse that love for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And innovative programs teaching students the basic principles of science. Every inch of the center communicates the message of STEM through the use of posters, exhibits, even live animals. But how many classrooms does the Ruth Patrick Center have? We have 10 classrooms in the Ruth Patrick Center that range from uh, life science classrooms to planetarium, physical science, earth science, and general classroom space. The Ruth Patrick Science Education Center is the only building on campus to have a planetarium, a state-of-the-art TV studio, a giant demonstration of the elements, and not to mention the largest amount of live animals on campus. Deborah McMurdy, the director of student programs who's in charge of the animals, gives us insight on having animals inside. First of all, the, all of the programs that we teach align with standards um, that are mandated in the state of South Carolina. So, for example, if students come for a program to learn about owls, it will tie in with the life science standards that are taught for their specific grade level. Um, but it's so much better to have the real live animal instead of just looking at a picture of an animal because we can have students do observations of animal behavior in addition to just looking at what the animal looks like. The animals are a live representation of biology and earth science that students and visitors can actually see, hear, and touch. How many animals does the center house? 
in this building, we have a barred owl, which is um, an amazing animal. Um, we have uh, two American alligators. They're young. One is very small, and the other is about three years old. We have um, snakes and turtles, uh, frogs, um, salamanders, that sort of thing. And all of the animals that live here are animals that are native to this area, to the Aiken, South Carolina um, you know, environment. Perhaps the best example of what the Ruth Patrick Center does with the animals is best represented by their popular bird owl, Raleigh, and his fascinating story. Well, this bird's name is Raleigh. He's from Raleigh, North Carolina. And about four and a half years ago, I got a phone call that there was a barred owl that had been hit by a car. And um, when this bird was hit by the car, it broke his left wing. And even though they took him to a vet, they were not able to put that wing back exactly the way it had been before. So as a result of that injury, this bird is not able to fly well enough to hunt. And so it was released back into the wild. It would starve to death um, or get eaten by a larger predator pretty quickly because he wouldn't be able to get away. After I picked him up, it took us about four months to train him to learn how to stand still on the glove, um, how to allow people to get very close to him, including little children. Um, he had never seen fluorescent lights. He had never heard the elevator. Um, you know, there were an awful lot of things that he had to get used to. And probably the biggest thing was he had to learn to get used to eating dead food. So in the wild, he would catch his food and eat it very, very fresh. Here, um, he gets one rat per day, two in the winter, that come from a freezer. We buy them frozen, and we thaw the rat out each day in warm water, and he has to take it from my hand. And if he doesn't take it from my hand, he does not eat that day. So it's, again, part of that training and part of that trust thing is that he learns that, you know, the human hand is not a, a bad thing. It's a good thing. One of the most visited parts of the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center is on the other side of the building, the DuPont Planetarium. It's here where shows are open to the public and visitors get to see a show along with a live view of the night sky. Darlene Smalley, the program director for the planetarium, describes the inside of the planetarium. It opened in 1995 and it has a 30 foot diameter dome and it's made of aluminum. It's perforated to allow for better airflow and better acoustics in there. It's tilted at a 30 degree angle, which is unusual for a planetarium. There's two reasons for that. One, so that it's easier to see everything in front of you and you don't have to look backwards a lot. The other reason they tilted it that much is because we wanted to have a camera obscura in our planetarium. So most of the shows have a recorded portion where you have some other person or group of people talking. But we always follow that up with a live Sky Tonight show where the presenter will show you the sky the way it is here over Aiken that night and point out the constellations, planets, and bright stars that are visible. So you can go out there and actually explore the heavens yourself. In these shows, visitors can learn about the constellations, distant galaxies, and outside planets, which people nowadays may have even forgotten about. We really want other people to go out and spend more time looking at the sky. You know, these days, we spend a lot of time inside and we're looking at computer screens or our iPhones or iPods or TVs or movies, and people don't know the night sky as well as, as people used to. The staff of the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center has even created their own shows right here in the center. So how is the planetarium show even created? We have a lot of different shows. We have a couple of shows that we have created here that we actually recorded with uh, Mr. Pierce doing the audio. First of all, if you're creating it from scratch, you gotta do all the research to write the show. And then you need to write it in sort of a story form to give it a little, you know, human interest. And then you've got to get all the images together, which takes a lot of time. And then coordinating the images of when are we going to use the Digistar, when are we going to use the slides, which slides, and when do we use video. And then you've got to program it. Programming takes hours and hours. I mean, it takes thousands of hours to program one show. An example of a successful show that was created by the center is Mission to Mars, a show which takes the audience to the red planet for a trip they will never forget. Another one of our more popular shows is called Mission to Mars, and that's one of the shows we actually created here. We did all the uh, 
editing, R wrote the show, produced the show, did the audio upstairs. Um, Mr. Pierce also made the video for that. We got all the images. I got most of the images from NASA, and then Dr. Sen and I made some of the images and put it all together. So that was a fun project, and it's pretty popular. Of course, shows couldn't be done without the help of a professor who knows a thing or two about creating them. Keith Pierce is the director of the only TV studio on campus. But what exactly is that studio used for? The television studio that we have here in the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center is used uh, by the campus at large almost every day. Uh, there are very few days where we don't have things that are scheduled and even things that are unscheduled that, that people come over and use the studio for because the studio has uh, sound qualities and uh, also visual qualities that you can't find anywhere else on campus. The TV studio is a vital tool in creating new videos for not only the planetarium but for USC Aiken as a whole. What really has, uh, has occurred in the last several years are a lot of people have used the studio for things like interviews, for uh, you know, various things like that, where they can bring people in and videotape an interview. The Ruth Patrick Center is very fortunate to have a television studio where it can create professional videos for its program. But how does it contribute to the motto of the center? The studio itself has a, um, a mission to try and to infuse a love of, of science and technology in uh, children. Its mission, because uh, especially television today, is so science oriented because it's all in a digital nature. Uh, it's something that really appeals to students because they are able to see that it is literally a science, uh, the production of video. Now that we've seen all the different services that the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center has to offer, let's visit perhaps their biggest event of the year, SEED. Science Education Enrichment Day, also known as SEED, is an event where people of all ages can experience all sorts of demonstrations and exhibits. John Hutchins, the Director of Special Programs, is in charge of putting this all together. I've been doing um, SEED the longest and it's been the longest thing that we've been doing around here with, as a community event, and it, it's grown so much. SEED is perhaps the biggest opportunity for kids throughout the community to take part and enjoy a day full of science-oriented exhibits and to develop a love for STEM. Well, our mission here at the Ruth Patrick Center is to infuse the love of science, technology, engineering, and math. And through this one-day event, we can impact 3,300 people and get them infused with love, the love of learning of STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. Another program that the center holds is the Traveling Science and Mathematics Demonstration Program, which allows teachers and students to experience science demonstrations sent by the Ruth Patrick Center. It's um, an educator resource center. So let's imagine that you're a teacher and you want to teach a lesson on electricity or rocks and minerals or you know, astronomy. You don't have some materials at your school, you can come to us, go to our website, call us, visit us, and we have over 300 kits that are, you know, have a broad range of topics. So a teacher can check out those materials from us, <clears throat> do the lesson, because they come, most of them come with lesson plans, some of them come with even assessment, they come with all the materials you need. You use it, you bring it back, we refurbish it, and it's ready for somebody else. Throughout the years, the center has maintained a strong partnership with another organization within the community, SRS. As long as I've been here, we've had a super strong partnership um, through their education outreach programs. They have been an advocate for education. Um, you can imagine they need, a, they need an educated workforce. So they have a, an, a vested interest in making sure that they have students that are excited about science and technology and engineering and math. So it's no question that the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center has strong interests to help out the community and school systems. We are very much interested in working with our community. That includes the school systems because our community is one rich with a need for scientists, engineers, 
and technology type people. As you have seen, the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center was created to infuse a love for science in students, adults, and most importantly, the children. The Ruth Patrick Center has already done so much in the community, but what does the future hold for this organization? Well, our future is really similar to our past. Uh, the, the good news is there are always new people coming along that uh, we want to reach and infuse that love for STEM. So as long as there are new young people out there that need to be introduced and engaged and excited about science and technology and engineering and mathematics, the Ruth Patrick Center has a place to do its work. In conclusion, the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center is a place that educates all visitors who are eager to learn about science. It's an environment that makes learning fun and interactive. Where else on campus can you find a TV studio, a planetarium, an observatory dome, and live animals all in one place? I hope you enjoyed the trip inside the Ruth Patrick Science and Education Center. To find out more, please log on to their website, or better yet, visit the center. You'll be glad you did.